In our last video, we ended by sending the Capture One Live link to McKinsey so that she could pick out the pictures for us to edit. And she's gone through and done that. If we look at our filter here, it looks like we have 26 images uh, that she wants us to edit. So let's come in here and start doing this. One reason I love Capture One Live, it just makes it really easy to send to your client or to whomever to pick out the pictures for them to edit. That's what I use it for, as you can tell. So let's come in here. I'm gonna start with a simple white balance so I know her shirt is white. Uh, it's a little too warm. Now, this first step here that I'm doing is something I do consistently across all of my sessions is the first thing is I'm trying to get this to be as basically neutral as possible. So what it looked like when I was there taking the picture. So I'm not going for any crazy effects or anything like that. I'm just going for what it was like. And then from there, if I want to add effects, I can do that later on. I'm not going to for this particular session. But even if we were doing some sort of a composite or something surreal or something, you know, with a lot of editing, I still do this base layer of just getting it to a point to where it's just a good solid photo without any crazy effects or crazy lighting or, you know, crazy filters or anything like that on it. Just getting it to be what it was. I'm going to pull back some of this, a little bit of highlight there. Okay, so once we have this pretty well the way we like it, now we can come in and hit actually a little bit too warm. I may want to adjust that. Let's try it on another one. I'm going to hit Control Shift C, and that's going to copy the adjustments. And then over here, hit Control Shift V, and we can paste those and see if we zoom in a little bit. We can see. Actually, I want to brighten this up just a little bit more in the shadow. There we go, something like that. And then I'm going to take this. So these three here, as we can see, because these were all in the same location, um, it's actually all, all of these shots are in the same parking garage. So that's the, the parking garage session that we did. Um, but these were in a different location in the garage than these here. And so all of these are going to be pretty consistent like that. So I'm going to use the same settings, basically. Bring it down just a little bit. doesn't have to be exactly the same. So for that, and then from this side, pull it in. But it's a great starting point. And then another little tip, while you're actually shooting the pictures, I know we're just focusing on the editing side here, but something that's helpful in the editing side when you're shooting the pictures is to keep your camera's settings consistent. So I was using the same settings uh, as far as the aperture, the shutter, the ISO, all, and, the, and the white balance, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of cameras have auto white balance, and then they try to change the white balance between every single picture. It recalculates it every time. Now, if the lighting is the same, then, of course, it's going to be pretty consistent. Uh, but if you're doing something like natural lighting, like these shots are here, and then the sun goes behind a cloud, the camera's going to calculate things just a little bit differently. It's also going to calculate things differently for something like this, because if I double click to get out of the zoom, because even though we're in the same location, this is a different part of that parking garage. And you can see the lighting is different. Again, still using natural lighting, but the lighting is different. And so the camera is going to try to calculate it differently if we have the white balance set to auto white balance. Now, I set it in this case to a consistent a white balance that I did beforehand. So it's consistent across. So I can just paste this in and then adjust just slightly to get our image. And it's really, it's really a nice way to be able to quickly edit some of these shots to get the color grading back to that neutral or back to that as you saw it in when you're actually shooting the picture. And then I can copy this from here. And because this white balance is the same as this one, you can see it's not changing. Because when I shot it, I had it locked. I had that white balance locked down. And so it's not 
recalculating everything every time and coming up with different results. It's just a nice little tip there that I've learned in my experience shooting. Try to lock it down as much as possible to get consistency across all of the shots. And then, of course, you can adjust them as you need to, like we're doing here. But it saves you time. And that way you can spend that time focusing on the edits that actually need to take time instead of some that don't need to take that much time. This is pull back a little bit more, even more to pull back some of that shirt. Go. And like this. And then continuing on here. So these are pretty, should be pretty consistent. Just a little, slight little tweak. This one might be a little different with someone else in the shot. go and we'll pull the exposure down just a little bit more because they were a little bit brighter just from the angle that I was shooting you can see the little the little wires here and then I was shooting on the other side of the little wires here so that is one thing when you're shooting with natural lighting the uh even the even if you have things locked down of course you know the sun does go behind a cloud or something does change or you know you don't have as much control over it but when you're doing a sh a session like this where you you are in a, like a this parking garage session then of course you can bring lights i did bring lights but i ended up not using them Um, any, you know, even the lights that you're still going to have that natural light to element to, to deal with and contend with. Now, these next shots here, I happen to remember that these were part of an HDR set. So let's come in here for these. So you can see they're, they're really blown out, right? And that's just because of the lighting and the way the lighting was, or I mean, the, 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 sky in the background so i did bracketed shots here for these so let's come in and we'll create a new session here and then i'm going to turn off my filter and find these and let's just organize these for later so this is something else I do on set. I know this is a little bookmark, basically. Just put my hand in front of the camera. And now I know I'm doing three bracket exposures. I remember I did three bracket exposures. Um, so this is one, two, three. So this is the first one. And then she had picked the edit from the second three. So I'm going to take these three here, pull them into my album. And let's see if there's any others. So the next three would be these. Actually, let's do this. We'll do another one just so we know, so it's easier. We're separating those out and we know easier which ones we need to bracket. And then here's a clean plate if we need it. Basically the same setup. I just took that and then some of these others, yeah, so Again, this is another HDR that we'll be doing. And I'm just, this is just real quick edit here, or quick organization, basically. And this. And then this last three. So this is going to be, this is actually a, a blooper. Um, this is just something fun that we always do. <laughs> that, but still edit. All right. All right. So that's that. So we can come back in here and get the rest of our, we'll, work, we'll deal with the HDRs here in a little bit, but we're going to come back and 
let's actually, this video is starting to run a little bit long. We have a few left to finish color grading. So let's go ahead and end this here. And in the next video, we'll continue on with our color grading for the rest of these individual shots. See you there.